introducing Japanese textiles with Suzanne Perrin. Today we're going to look at a girl's kimono set. This is the full outfit for a young girl for about the age of seven when she goes visiting the shrines or for special occasions. It comes in a carrying case like this and it weighs about 10 pounds, five kilos when it's full. It has everything she needs to go out and be smart and formal and also casual. And there are many things inside which I'm going to show you today. Also, this is a set for hire and if you would like to hire it, please contact me on the details at the end. Right, let's start with the basics, with the undergarments that the girl will wear. First, we have shorts, like knickers. We have tights, white tights like this, with the little straps for underneath the foot. We have ties, because everything in kimono is tied together. There's, there are no pins or buttons or zips in kimono. There are tabby socks to wear with the zori, the shoes. And there is an obi board, which goes underneath the obi at the front to keep it nice and flat. There is also a little undershirt in pink and white cotton, very nice, very cool, very comfortable for her to wear, which matches with a pink and white skirt or slip, which she wears underneath everything. So these are the basic undergarments, which go underneath the juban, which goes underneath the kimono. There are also three of these very colourful pink and yellow ties. These can be used variously. They can be used as obi sashes or they can be used as other tying elements underneath the kimono itself. So they're quite useful. We'll see those a bit more. So we come to the main accessories for the outfits. The most important one, of course, being the obi sash. This goes on top of the main kimono and it is a short obi because it is for a child. Normally, obi sashes are between 12 and 14 foot long, very thick, and they get wrapped around the body and tied in elaborate arrangements at the back. Of course, we can't have all of that on a small child. So this is the obi sash, which is tied on at the back. It is in a brocade, orange, yellow, gold, white. It's very beautiful and it has the um, pattern of play balls on it. Now at the back we have a ready-made arrangement which is just clipped on at the back for the girl. So this makes life a lot easier. It takes about three minutes to put on and not 30 minutes to tie in its way. It's made in a beautiful double bow at the back with also cord bows with tassels over the top of that. So that's a very lovely arrangement, a formal arrangement for the back of the kimono which is clipped on and tied. So that makes it very easy. The other accessories that go with the outfit are the shoes, the zori, which you have to wear. These are in also brocade with shell design figured silk with chrysanthemums and cartwheels which are auspicious symbols matching with a little bag to go with it, so they all go together. Also in matching, we have the obijime, which is another tie which goes across the obi at the front like this. So this is an extra tie that gives added interest to the arrangement. We also have a little purse which actually slips into the front of the obi uh, also in the same matching material. This is a little purse that can be used for small items or perhaps papers, something like that. We also have a little fan. Everybody has to have a fan. It's very important as an accessory. That also gets slotted into the obi sash at the front. And we have this other little accessory, which is like a little casing. Now, originally, this used to have a knife in it so that the lady wearing the outfit would have some protection for herself. It was very dangerous times, especially in the medieval period for women. So they used to often carry a little knife to protect themselves. Obviously, we don't need to give the child a knife, but they still use the little sheath as a kind of symbolic protection for her. So these are the main 
ingredients of the accessories. So here we come to the main garment of the whole outfit, or the main two garments I should say. This is the Jubin, the undergarment, which you must wear. This is a very thin uh, rayon, very light and cool to wear with its front ties and the uh, collar has to be a separate collar which is more decorative. So here we have a nice embroidery of flowers in orange which matches the main kimono here and it's on figured silk of a sort of key pattern here. So you must have the collar underneath visible in the whole garment. So the collar and the cuffs should be visible. So this is quite an important detail and this matches very well. So the undergarment is here and the sleeves of the juban, the garment, match the length inside of the long sleeves here. So this is our main kimono, the formal kimono, and we wear it left over right, like this, left over right. So this is um, our formal kimono. Now the, the children's kimono you will see are usually altered. It's taken up at the waist here and in at the shoulders here. So that as the child grows up it's let out so that she can still wear this garment into her teens and maybe her twenties if she's not too tall. So we have the long waving sleeves, the furisode. Uh, which all unmarried girls wear, and they wear them until the time they get married, so she's got a long time to wear this. And it's um, polyester, a satin finished polyester, with a figured ground of clouds and flowers and petals, and then a resist a stencil dye of flowers here, chrysanthemums, peonies, um, um, beautiful little sakura, the cherry blossoms and leaves. So an assortment of lovely flowers here on the sleeves and here. Now the main part of the design comes here in the front panel and this is marked by the fact that the main flower right in the middle has couched gold on it and this is the only flower that has couched gold on the entire garment. So the front panel uh, left coming up the front is the most important part of the design of the kimono. Now you would wear the, your obi sash here in the middle so this would look very good with this and echoing the orange, bright orange into the obi sash would be here. So I'm going to turn this around because in Japan they view the kimono usually from the back so that you can see the patterns. So here we have, and you can see here it's still taken in over the shoulders and up in the middle here. So this is an important feature. And this would have the beautiful bow, or the tied arrangement, at the back coming here. So this would look very nice. Now there is a convention in kimono wearing that if the garment is dyed in any of the techniques, whether it's yuzen, shibori or any other techniques, if it's dyed then the obi sash should be woven. It's a convention that, that likes the opposites to the obi sash and the garment to complement each other. So if the garment is woven, then the sash should be dyed. And there are plenty of dyed obi sashes out there. So this would look very nice. This is a, a beautiful outfit for a, a young girl and would suit her very well on her day out. Now, as well as the formal kimono, which we've just seen, there are two other kimonos in the set. This is a, a semi-formal uh, day wear, more casual, and the undergarment here, which is the yukata, which is a simple cotton garment that can be worn on its own at home in the evening or even to sleep in if you like. So the yukata underneath is simple cotton. There's no separate collar on this. It has a, a quite a, a nice pattern. It's white background with figured um, um, symbols of water and flowers. And then these big roundels of um, patches of colour with blue fans and flowers of the four seasons, irises, chrysanthemums, uh, blossoms, all sorts of things. So this is underneath. Um, very cool to wear this. The sleeves again echo the length of the sleeves here and you could wear this in the evening with perhaps one of those pink ties that we've got in the set here. You could wear that as the obi sash, would be quite acceptable. So this is the semi-formal 
kimono, summer kimono. It's cotton, quite nice, stiff cotton. You can see again that it's been taken up at the waist and in at the shoulders here, so it's a little bit shorter. So the other one you can see down below um, coming out at the hem, but that's quite acceptable. So this is made of a sort of figured ground cotton in a sort of grill pattern, very nice, with uh, stenciled patterns of hibiscus, I think, flowers and petals, and these are butterflies here. So very much uh, giving the feeling of summer, summer season. So this is a semi-formal kimono, which you would wear for casual occasions, going out in the evening and relaxing. You might be able to get away with the obi sash in the middle here, possibly, without the bow at the back, I think, because that's a, a formal arrangement. Or, again, you could make one of the ties of the pink um, fabrics that we have here and make a big sash here going right around and tie it at the back. That would be quite acceptable. So she has the three garments, the formal, the semi-formal and the casual yukata, which make up the set here for the girl. So just to finish off the whole ensemble, there's a few hair ornaments that you might like to put in your girl's hair. A little bow like this made of cherryman silk uh, with a comb and little tassels um, and ribbons hanging from that. Or you might like a hair clip with a chrysanthemum. Even a plastic one is all right and nice that you can put to hold up the girl's hair at the back or maybe a little brooch with a chrysanthemum as well. You also have the fan. This is the fan from the set uh, with a lovely crane on it. Always a good luck symbol in Japan, the beautiful crane. So this is the desired effect that you're trying to get to make your little girl look like the perfect kimono lady with all the accessories, hair ornaments, bags, shoes and everything looking very, very smart. When you go to the shrines, you take your children to the shrines, they get a gift bag from the shrine. This is a sort of thing they carry around uh, during the day and it has all auspicious symbols in it. So you've got the rising sun of Japan, the crane, the turtle, pine, bamboo and plum, which are the three friends of winter. And it's really giving the child a thousand blessings for good luck, good fortune and health during their life. So it's an auspicious thing to have with you during the day. On the reverse side it shows you a Shinto shrine with a Tori gateway and um, a happy um, family outing with the mother, the daughter and the little boy being protected by the Shishi, the lion god which is present in the Shinto shrines for protection. So all good luck symbols for your children. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Um, this set is for hire. If you would like to hire it, please do contact me on the contact details at the end. Thank you for watching. Thank you.